the gunfire from the shooting range. Well, in the old days, there's nothing out here. There was this place. In fact, if you watch the movie Arizona, they do a scene up here on the hill where their guide looks down there and says, Tucson, the only thing you see is the movie set. Everything else is just brush. Well, they took advantage of that for years, making movies out here. All that nice scenery out here. Well, John Wayne's first movie, Rio Bravo, he has Ward Bond bringing some wagons right up the road here. Wagon train. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Ward Bond was the wagon master and wagon train for years. Anyway, right about here, you get stopped by the sheriff's deputy. Anybody remember the sheriff's deputy in Rio Bravo? El Morachon? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, D. Martin. So, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, later on, Dino, he's back down here. He's making sure nobody's bringing guns into town because they got a dangerous killer in their custody. Unfortunately for him, the killer's friends come out of that blacksmith shop right there. Oh. They grab up Dino and leave him hogtied in there. John Wayne later figures out what's up and he shoots the bad guys. That's what John Wayne does, right? Well, John Wayne made four movies on the property and in the process, he added 27 buildings to this place. One of the buildings he added is that Adobe barn right there. That's the real Bravo barn. That barn actually turns up in all four movies that he made here. In real Bravo, they take that dangerous killer in there. He's played by Claude Akins. They're going to exchange him for Dean Martin, who's being held by the killer's friends in, an, in a warehouse about where Arizona Theater sits. Um, I'll show you a picture of the warehouse here in a little bit. Anyway, Dean Martin's getting close to Claude Akins. They start fighting. Everybody else starts shooting. Two of the bad guys run across back there, and they get blasted by Stumpy's shotgun. But they got to tell Stumpy to get away from the wagon he's next to. It's full of dynamite. So then you end up with Stumpy throwing dynamite and John Wayne shooting it. Blows up the porch of the warehouse. Bad guys give up and good guys get to live happily ever after. That's John Wayne's first movie out here. Second one gets a little crazier. The second one's that charming love story, McClintock. If you guys didn't know, McClintock's based on Taming of the Shrew. So it's John Wayne, Marina O'Hara, their husband and wife, and they get along just like my ex-wife and I. Um, yeah. They're over in the hotel, which is where Big Jake sits now. They're arguing up in her room. She steps out on the balcony. Off the balcony, she goes into a hay wagon. First big controversy of the movie is John Wayne jumping in the hay wagon. They're like, oh, no, no, you're worth too much money. He goes, yeah, it's my money making your movie. You guys go back and watch McClintock again. Watch when John Wayne jumps because he forgot to take off that Rolex watch. Oh. Oh. Anyway, um, <laughs> Marina O'Hara climbs out of the wagon, but she starts heading up the road that way. We used to have a lot more buildings on the property, and I'll tell you about that a little later. But anyway, she's heading up the road that way. You see the hills in the background. Um, John Wayne's following her. The whole town's following him. Well, she gets up there a ways, and she turns to her right. When she turns to her right, there's actually another barn just to her left. But she turns to her right, goes down behind the buildings, and goes into this barn. And comes out of the other one. That's where she gets her skirt ripped off and runs back to the hotel and just her bloomers. So we call those things movie magic. Um, you're going to hear me say a lot of that. I don't know why they cut it like that. Um, maybe the back of this barn looked better than the back of that barn. Maybe they shortened up the chase. I don't know, but. You guys, now that you've been here, you can watch that little movie, Magic, where she goes in one barn and comes out another. But uh, anyway, the third movie John Wayne does out here is El Dorado, and that's when he put the wooden piece on the front of this building. That wooden piece is Sweet Larson's Gun Shop. Y'all watch El Dorado. It's got a very young James Conn in it. He plays this kid they call Mississippi. He can throw a knife really well, but John Wayne determines that he can't shoot. By shooting one shot at a saguaro cactus, which nowadays will get you arrested, yes. by the way. But anyway, he misses his one shot, so John Wayne's determined to find something he can shoot. So they go inside Sweet Larson's gun shop right there, and that's where Sweet sells the kid a little sawed-off shotgun, because those are so much easier to shoot. So <laughs> Anyway, cool thing about Sweet Larson. First off, he's born in Denmark. Um, but if you guys get out to El Cajon, California, there's still a gallery in his name. His name is Olaf Weikers. All right? He's an artist. That's what he does. Um, his nurse was actually here. But if you guys watch the beginning of El Dorado, as the credits are rolling, those Western scenes in the background are actually his oil paintings. So John Wayne incorporated him into it. Yeah. Last movie John Wayne did out here is Rio Lobo. You guys ready to go see the great Rio Lobo? Yeah. You love this. Considering I've never seen it. How do all these filming mistakes make it past the... The critics. I don't know. Sometimes they do, sometimes to... they don't. Yeah.
Yeah, it's true. I should have caught a number one, so. Like you like you like Paul Newman and Ombre, which by the way, and Ombre they get on the stagecoach right over there, but they get stranded over the Helvetia mine. And you know, eventually Newman's like loading his single action revolver up and he goes down there to shoot it out. And when he draws on Frank, Frank Silvera, he's shooting a double action revolver. I'm like yes. he switched guns from somewhere along the water. See, I bet when you watch the western you look for this kind of stuff. I do. That I, I would never I would never even know. I remember in the Brady Bunch, they'd leave in one car and come home and <laughs> really? <laughs> So I think it's uh, the movie Seven Ups, like through the whole movie the Seven Ups, he's got a Smith and Wesson revolver, yeah. and my friend noticed that he gets the shootout at the end with a Colt <laughs> revolver, and I'm like, how'd that happen? Yes. Anyway, that's the great Rio Lobo, or as our redundant sign says, Rio Lobo River. That's where people <laughs> the wow. um, but, <laughs> the As you can see, it's obviously man-made. And the lesson here also is that if you uh, take over running a park that was shut down for almost three years, don't just run out there and turn the water on. Or a year later, you might be cleaning up the mess. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the lesson there. But, yeah, um, they put man-made water out here. Um, in the old days, during the movie Arizona, they were hauling like 55,000 gallons of water out here all the time for life. So, so they put this out here, man-made, no big deal to bring a tractor up. Put a two foot deep ditch next to it, throw a bridge on it, and there's your real logo for the movie. Alright? Oh, it's long gone. But I uh, got poster for real logo and pictures for real Bravo over here. Somebody loves their dirt bike. Anyway. If you guys remember the movie Real Lobo, it starts off during the American Civil War. John Wayne's a Yankee colonel trying to ship some gold by train. He Reds jump his train and make off with his gold. He ends up capturing two of them. Captain Pierre Cardona, who he always calls Frenchy, and Sergeant Tuscarora yeah. Phillips. They won't say give the information about the gold. It's just storage right now, folks. Yeah. We'll get to that in a moment, too. Anyway, um, they won't say who gave the information about the gold, so off to prison they go. Um, John Wayne's there to meet him at the end of the war because one of his friends died during the train incident. Anyway, Tuscarora, Tuscarora, he moves back home to Rio Lobo, out to Phillips Ranch. We used to have a ranch house out there by the base of the hill. During the COVID shutdown, with all of our employees laid off, the county declares it a nuisance and bulldozes it. Oh, nuisance. Anyway, I had a county heavy duty or heavy equipment worker here the other day. He might have caught no one. So yeah. Anyway, um, in the movie, this new guy comes to Rio Lobo. He's got a lot of money to throw around, and anybody he can't buy out, he uses the dirty sheriff to run them out. Tuscarora brings some horses into town. Excuse being a horse thief, and they could go out and try and get old man Phillips to give up his land. If you guys pay attention to the poster there in the background, that's old man Phillips. He's played by Jack Elam. Jack oh, Elam has the distinction of making the most movies on this property. He made eight movies out here. Glenn Ford made seven. Audie Murphy did six. But practically, anybody that had something to do with a Western was out here at one point or another. Blackjack. Blackjack. What about Blackjack? No, I just, oh. just a nickname I put on it. All right, I'm going to tell you about Jack. Blackjack. Blackjack. All right, so who can tell me the, the, the Western movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger was in? He played Handsome Stranger. He was named after his father. Kindergarten Cop. No? No? No, um, it was a movie called The Villain, and Kirk Douglas plays the villain. Um, you actually watch the movie, the smartest one in the whole movie is the horse whiskey. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. the whole idea of the story is that the villain's trying to get Anne Margaret away from Handsome Stranger. So we're out here filming Last Dollar, and this guy starts telling us about being out here when they're making the villain. He says that the one time that they quit staring at Anne Margaret was when Arnold needed a clean shirt. The guy pulled his shirt off and had muscles stacked on top of him. But Arnold Schwarzenegger made one Western movie, and he made it here. So that gives you an idea how important this place is to Western. I'll be back. So um, anyway, um, yeah, Phillips, old man Phillips is out here. He's getting harassed by the dirty sheriff. John Wayne and Frenchie ride into town. They get caught up in all the drama, and they find out the guy with all the money is the same one was selling the information to the reps during the war. So John Wayne grabs him. He sends Frenchie for help, but Frenchie gets grabbed by the dirty sheriff. So we end up with a dirty sheriff and Frenchie here, the bridge in the middle, and on the other side was an uh, an adobe cantina where John Wayne has the money man. 
Frenchie's walking along. He looks by the bridge and sees Tuscarora in the water. He dives in the water, and everybody else starts shooting. Eventually, the good guys get to live happily ever after, of course. Now, since you mentioned Blackjack, Blackjack. the guy that actually dives in the two-foot ditch out here is actually Blackjack Young. Um, Jack Young eventually ended up being our operations manager here at Old Tucson. But he was a stunt man after he became, after he served his time as a demolition diver in World War II. Oh, wow. So he quickly learned to hate horses. His very first thing was a stirrup drag where you got your you're laying on the ground, your foot's up in the stirrup, and the horse runs off of you. When you're supposed to pull the cord and it releases, uh, supposed to pull a cord and it releases. <laughs> so another 150 yards oh, later, they got the ouch. horse stopped. And yeah, um, if you guys watch the um, John Wayne trilogy where he's playing the cavalry shows, right? One of those movies, I think it might be Rio Grande, there's an Apache riding along the side of a dune. Poof, he gets shot off of his horse. He rolls off downhill side. The horse rolls right over the top of him. That's also Blackjack. Um, during the making of the Alamo out there in Brackettville, Texas, uh, Travis is getting his um, Alamo defenders back inside the Alamo. Mexican cavalryman charges towards him on his horse. Travis turns and shoots the guy off the back of his horse. That's Blackjack. <laughs> and my favorite story about Blackjack has to do with the movie El Dorado. Do you remember when Mississippi dives under the horses there and tells John Wayne, I was always told the horse wouldn't step on a person? That's Blackjack, and he got stepped on. <laughs> so, yeah. So, since you mentioned that, I thought I'd throw that out there. Good segue, huh? Anyway, um... The bridge that was out here, we stayed up here for a couple more years. Clint Walker came into town for a movie called Yuma, not to be confused with 3, 310 to Yuma, which we also had a part in, but he's the new marshal in town, and this is how he gets to town. Now, you guys that were looking in the building, you might have noticed it's also really cool. Well, we're using that for storage right now, and that humming sounds the coolest air conditioner on the property. It's like, can we make it into a museum so I can have more people in there? We'll find out. Well, new company, give them time, you know. Texas. If you own a business, guess what your name is? Ayers. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any idea why they called it Buchanan Rides Alone, because the first thing he does is ride out of Mexico, and he's never alone for the rest of the <laughs> Hey, you know. We're going to go off to the courthouse, but we're going to talk about Hotel Del Toro, and these little adobes, and maybe that tree over there. So what did you do during COVID, having been uh, laid off? I was in a school play at the restaurant. I worked on that. Essential. Yeah, I think I made less money than the guy who was in the house. This is all movies. I got caught up in a lot of movies from here. That's the issue. Four hats. Four hats. Four hats. Shut off the boots, please. They stole my rock again. Today, we used to have a trip off. That's over here. There we go. Oh, it's over on that side. That's okay, guys. Okay. Nightfall will start here this afternoon and I'll move it again. This was not filmed here. <laughs> I have no idea why this is here. One of my favorite movies. Yeah. But it says made in China. And this. So a month ago, the only person that shows up for one of my tours is a French school teacher. <laughs> Sounds romantic, huh? Anyway, well, her dad was a retired uh, French movie critic. So we're walking along, and she's looking at all the posters, taking pictures of everything. I says, yeah, I haven't found a copy of that yet. Oh, my dad has a copy of it. Wow. She actually sent this movie to me from France. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Is that the cool. he's, like a, he's like a rabbi? Yeah, he's yeah. a rabbi from Poland. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Harrison Ford, he, you'll like this one, right? I didn't know that um, in the movie, he stops briefly in Moscow, and Harrison Ford runs in and robs the bank. It's the same, it's the same bank building 
or it's the same building that they used for the dry goods in Josie, Wales. Oh, oh so yeah, yeah. Years, yeah. They did, when Josie, Wales rides into that Texas town, that's actually the Mescal set. In Josie, Wales, they did no yeah. scenes over here, but they used what was then our Mescal set for that. So, um, and then later, he, or excuse me, before that, he actually did Joe Kibble, which we'll talk about. But yeah, he goes in and robs the, robs the bank, and very, yeah, very short that. scene in Mescal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but um, he's been to the Mescal set. If you guys watch Josie Wills, the Texas town that he rides into is the Mescal set. Um, he goes into a dry goods, and as he's coming out, the guy yells, he says, Josie Wills, as Josie's stepping up on the saloon across the street. The saloon, that's where he says you're going to pull those pistols or whistle Dixie. The saloon that you see in that scene becomes the Oriental and Campbell and Hatch's billiards for the movie Tombstone. They actually divided the building up. The original writer, Kevin Jar, actually put a wall in between it. But last minute, George Cosmanos, the second director, had that wall taken out. So when you see um, Josie bow in that silver dress, that beautiful silver dress, she bows to Wyatt. Wyatt's actually standing on the billiard side in that scene. So to, taking that wall out was wonderful for that movie. So, um, but that movie was... That was a neat room. Yeah. 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 So did they get the wallpaper back up? Yeah. So a little bit of it. Yep. Yeah. They, you know, they sent the wallpaper off to get it copied by somebody. So. All right. Back in here in the courthouse. We used the courthouse for that movie Last Dollar. Okay. If you guys go back and watch the movie Last Dollar, when it comes out, you might see some old guy sitting over here in the corner as one of the jurors. All right. I was sitting there watching the judge. The judge in the movie, I'm like, looking at him, I'm like, I recognize the face. Then I remember, he gets stabbed by Rambo in First Blood. <laughs> it's Chris, Chris Mulkey. He's still out there doing movies. Um, also, for that movie, Jacqueline Bissett, she did some scenes out here. Dermot Mulroney was out here. And I'm not even sure who all else. Um, I just saw the trailer for a movie we did during the winter called Among Wolves. Um Funny thing is, last dollar, they're offering me $100 a day out here. That first day that I worked when I was the juror, 20 minutes in front of the camera. That was it. Nice. Um, the next two days, really easy. Um, among Wolves, they call me one Sunday evening. Hey, we need a bunch of people for one scene. What do you got going on? A minor strike. Okay, what do you want me to do? Dress like a miner. Okay. So I get out here at 6 p.m. They offered me $100 for one scene. I get out here at 6 p.m. The very first thing that happened is wardrobe runs over there and starts rubbing charcoal on my tan pants. So um, she just ruined an $85 pair of pants. And then we were out here from 6 p.m. I left here at 4.50 in the morning. For Dro bucks. for hundred bucks and bragging Dro rights. So. Drove back to the ranch, <laughs> slept for two hours, and came back here to do tours. And then, but and it, and it was one of the coldest nights in the winter. Uh -huh. Then you landed up only in Denver. Yeah, practically. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um. But um. Cool thing was, I spent the whole time standing next to Tom Berenger. Ah. Uh -huh. So um. Which Tom Berenger. He was right. He's wearing his boots. The funny thing is, you know, he's like 82 now. He was so focused. It's like he never really opened up till at the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, by then, I was like, I just want to go home. Yes. But, um, he was but, in character. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Trace Atkins is doing the movie. He came out and said, "Howdy, does all." Um, real cool guy. I've actually seen Trace and a few other things. Um, James Russo plays one of the bad guys as he usually does. Mm -hmm. And that dude's a character. I'm pretty sure he and I get along just fine. <laughs> but, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, in the, if you guys watch the trailer, it's got that Fernie guy that's in Yellowstone and you'll see some other old timers that we haven't seen in a while. So I'm looking forward to that one. What's coming the name in. of it again? Among Wolves. Mm -hmm. So. And the, and the trailers kept the title. If you guys didn't know, a lot of times they'll film under one thing and, and release under another. That's why when people ask me, well, what they film? It's like, what difference does it make? I probably won't release under yeah. that anyway. <laughs> you know, just like Buchanan Rides Alone. That was actually filmed. It was a, still a Buchanan movie, but it was not filmed under Buchanan Rides Alone. I don't just don't remember exactly what they called it. So, My favorite is, I just told you about Gunfight at the OK Corral. Gunfight at the OK Corral was shot as shootout at the OK Corral 
And there is also a movie out there that was released as Shoot Up at the OK Corral. You just never see it because it's, you know, compared to this one. Anyway, um, so standing next to Behringer, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to tie you guys into something that happened out here. Um, I told you I wanted to talk about Hotel Del Toro across the street. Go back to the early movies, watch Arizona. There's actually a scene in Arizona where a guy's walking right past what's now Hotel Del Toro. It's just a single story adobe, um, but it's got those two big picture windows that you'll see out there. In fact, they're putting one of the windows in, the one which will be to our left as you look at it. They were putting that window into the building in the scene in Arizona. The last time you see it as a single story adobe is in a 1950 movie with Jimmy Stewart called Winchester 73. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in the last 20 minutes in the movie, but I got to tell you about what happens at the beginning of the movie. At the beginning of Winchester 73, you guys get to see Jimmy Stewart ride into Dodge City, Kansas, and he enters into a shooting competition for a rare rifle, which he wins by shooting coins that Wyatt Earp throws in the air. That's what you guys get to see. But in 1950, on a crowded California movie set to film that, they brought in a guy named Herb Parsons. So just off to um, Jimmy Stewart's left, when you see Jimmy Stewart shooting coins out of the sky, Herb Parsons sure, sure. is shooting coins out of the sky <laughs> using a real Winchester rifle loaded with live ammunition. Ooh. Now, we had heard all the about the incident up on the Rust set, and the people got hurt up yeah. there. And, you know, it's Kill. like, yeah. wow. Well, the media is telling you, oh, they never use live ammunition in a movie. Well, Winchester 73 is an exception to that. Um, they tell you that people didn't have real guns in movies. Well, I was carrying a real gun when I did the scene right across the street for Last Dollar. You know, it's like, yeah, we use real guns in movies. I don't play gunfighter in a movie, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> um, <laughs> In the movie, Among Wolves, standing next to Behringer, there's a point where he shoots two of my friends. Um, the armorer, who, by the way, visited here last night, the armorer tells us all, I'm now going to give Tom Behringer this 38 caliber revolver, and I'm going to load it with these blanks. So you had an opportunity to look at it if you wanted to. He then goes up to Behringer, who, like I said, is standing right next to me. I'm now loading the three blanks into the 38, and I'm going to give it to Behringer. Well, when he gives it to Behringer, say that curtain is my friend Greg. He tells him to aim at that power box right there mm -hmm. to the right. Because the camera's over here. You're not going to know if he's aiming at Greg or if he's aiming off to the right. Well, in that case, we had a jug out there. And I'm looking right down Behringer's arm. So I see that he's not pointing his gun at Greg. That is how you safely use a firearm in movies. Okay. Whatever happened up there, I don't know. But I do know it was not one safety violation. It was more than a few. I was a firearms instructor in the military. I was a firearms instructor for law enforcement. And I was a firearms instructor for civilians. And then I came out here and I've been an armorer on movies. So the reason I don't play gunfighter is I spent 20 years as a cop. I didn't play gunfighter then. So I'm probably not going to use an offset if I have to use a gun in a hurry. You know what I mean? These guys that are actual actors, that's what they're trained to do. Um, the reason that Russ set really isn't going to change anything in movies is because nowadays we have digital photography. If you guys went and watched Harrison Ford in the Indiana Jones movie, he went from 30 to 80 to 30 to 80. If you can do that, you can do anything in a movie. So they're going to put real guns in movies. They're just going to edit them into it. Um, where it has affected the industry is right here. Our guys use blank firing guns only now. We're not even allowed to have our Ruger Vaqueros on the property because they're capable of shooting live ammunition. The bad thing is, is the Vaqueros always worked. The blank firing guns don't always work. So you'll listen to If you guys come back tonight when they do the opening show, you'll hear one of the complaints go pop, and the next one boom. And, you know, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. They're, they're black powder though, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the ones that they have now shoot a small, I believe it's an 8 millimeter blank. Okay. Um, whereas the Vaqueros, we used to load our own blanks for those and we would do half loads or full loads and it's all black powder. And the funny thing is, it's just, you're one of those things that you stick the fake flowers in that, that plasticky stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we used on top of it. Oh. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, we always did it safely. We always used an offset so people didn't get hurt. Whatever happened up there, apparently they didn't use an offset. Mm -hmm. so. 
And I don't understand why it was out for rehearsal. But anyway, so we're in our movie, um, Winchester 73. Uh, the guy rides into town. He finds out they're going to rob. They stole his rifle. But um, he's chasing after the guys that stole his rifle. He finds out they're going to rob the bank of Tascosa. So welcome to Tascosa, folks. Um, Jimmy Stewart rides up right out here. He ties off to a little adobe building. And behind him is the single-story adobe that is now Hotel Del Toro. That's 1950. In 1951, Hotel Del Toro becomes a wooden two-story for a movie called Last Outpost. It stars some actor by the name of Ronald Reagan. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it stays a wooden two-story at least to the mid-70s because out of all of the movies that Old Tucson's associated with, probably the single most violent movie is Death Wish with Charles Bronson. Fortunately for us, all the violence takes place in New York. But Bronson does get sent out here to do some work. And the guy he's working with says, let's go to lunch. So they drive their station wagon right up the road we just walked down. And they get out of the car right in time for a stunt show. Mm. The stunt guys that are shooting it out right out here are actual old, old Tucson employees. And the people cheering them on are guests just like you guys. It's the only movie out there with a real old Tucson show in it. And I don't recommend it because it's such a violent movie. But... Anyway, the building changes again to the Spanish style that it has now about 10 years after that. And we do this really awesome comedy out here with three top name comedians. Any guesses on what that movie three is? Three Amigos. Three Amigos. Steve Martin. Um, yep. Martin Short. And the other one. It's still going around. Anyway, it's got some cool movie magic when we're out here a little bit later. Look over the Tucson Hills. Later in the movie, Three Amigos, you see the Amigos riding up the Tucson Hills. And right on the other side is this girl's village, which is actually in Lone Pine, California. But this girl's having problems with El Guapo and his bandits terrorizing her village. She comes out here to hire gunfighters. It's probably the most beautiful old Tucson ever, but, okay? This, this is a beautiful Mexican city. She ends up going over here to the mission. He's doing laps out there now. And she, go, he, she ends up going to the mission and watching a silent movie with the amigos in it. She sends them a telegram. They think they're coming out to make a movie. She thinks she's getting gunfighters. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So the amigos right up, right outside here. They get off their horse, singular, and they go inside Cantina del Baracho, which is a bar for a drunk. Okay. But they go in there and they do a cool little mother buttercup. Now, if you guys ever come back here in Santee, the other historians here. Make Santee do my little buttercup. <laughs> the, the guy's excellent at it. He came out here originally for an off-Broadway show. He was a Broadway performer. He hates that I tell everybody that he's a Broadway performer, so you know what I do, right? Everybody. You know, but yeah, make him do it. Anyway, they do their little dance routine in the cantina. They step out of the cantina. They look over Hotel Del Toro, and there goes the mail plane. And if you don't know why it's a mail plane, watch the movie again, because Ned will tell you. Yeah. So, anyway, so what happens to Cantina del Baracho and the other buildings out there? Well, in 1995, up on Kansas Street, that's now completely gone, we have a fire breakout inside one of the buildings. All right. Um, last I heard, it's still an open arson investigation. Anyway, they get the 300 guests that are in the park out of the way. Local fire shows up, and the first thing they did was kill the electricity for safety. When they did that, the 20,000 gallon tank went down. The pump of the 20,000 gallon tank went down out there. They go to the backup pump and it's down for repair. So this place burns and burns and burns until the air base across town sends out two big tanker trucks. In the process, we lost 40% of the buildings on the property. What survives is Hotel Del Toro going back to where we came in, the barn that we were just back, just at going back to the entrance. And then you'll see a little later a church back over here. That church started out life in 1968 for a movie called Heaven with a Gun with Glenn Ford. And what we were told was that they made that into a church in 2003 for a movie called Ghost Rock with Gary Busey. Who here has seen Ghost Rock with Gary Busey? You're welcome. <laughs> Save yourself the two hours of your life. Um, I own the movie. I've watched it once. I honestly hope I don't watch it again. Um, it's not Gary Busey's fault. You know, Adrian Barbo actually runs the saloon over here. She was great in it. We have two employees that work here that don't even like admitting they were on that movie. Oh, it's wow. really, it's that badly edited. 
Um, it's interesting because right now at Mescal, they're filming a martial arts movie. Well, they had Kung Fu fighting and, and Ghost Rock. In fact, the guy that plays Lo Pan in Big Trouble in Little China was out here. But there's a scene where his, where the two brothers, his two sons, are on both, you know, opposite sides of the problem. And they're kung fu fighting. Well, that's cool. I understand that. But then our main character, who we still don't really understand why he's even there, our main character walks up and he starts kung fu fighting. In fact, he kicks random cowboy who runs from off screen. He front kicks his cowboy into a campfire who then runs off on fire. Well, that, the guy that runs off on fire is my friend Rob. I'm like, hey, Rob, you want to tell me about this? No. <laughs> so it's just such a poorly edited movie. You're just like, what? What was that? But the funniest thing is, you never see the church in it. So I get you guys out here doing tours, and I've had more than a few of you guys go, hey, that was in Little House on the Prairie. Well, there's what, 17 seasons of Little House? <laughs> I'm already working double shifts, you know. When am I gonna find the time to watch all of that? So, anyway, we'll get we'll get to the bottom of it. I'll show you that here in a little bit. I'm gonna tell you some stuff real quick over here by the entrance. One of my favorite movies of this was called Cinnamon. Oh yeah. 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 Hey, what did they tell you at Mescal? About Cimarron with Glenn Ford. Um so yeah. Cimarron if you go out to the Mescal set, the town that they built there was built for Monty Walsh with Lee Marvin. He did and scenes he there, and he rides the gray right out here, where he rides the horse. So both of these places are in um, Monty Walsh. But before that, there were little scenes that were done on occasion. In fact, in Rio Lobo, when they leave Blackthorn right here, there's a scene where they're riding along, and I'm pretty sure that's out at Mescal. Just real quick, but I'm like, that's Mescal. I know that's Mescal. Okay. So, um, but Cimarron, 1960, 1960, they did a, a movie with Cimarron with Glenn Ford, and it's actually the second Cimarron. Um, but that's the Oklahoma Land Rush. And they all ride across the field that's now Mescal. And later on in the movie, there's this beautiful town there, but Mescal runs this way. And that town runs this way. Part of the $10 million they spent in, in 1960 for Cimarron was basically photo imposing a California movie set with the mountains of uh, Mescal in the background. The Rincon Mountains there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they actually, they actually superimposed a California set at, at Mescal, and then later they built the town. Um, they shoot Monty Walsh out there, then the windstorms knock half the buildings down, then they go back to shoot... Um, Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, and it's like, wait, I see that building, but that building used to be over here, and this building is closer. Wait, what? You know, and you find out that they that um, old Tucson went out there and threw some of those buildings back up and shot the next movie. You know, so yeah, if you get a chance to visit the scowl, do it. Um, it's, it's not part of old Tucson anymore, but it's old Tucson's movie history. So. All right, so real quick, like, um. I told you that um, they're going to rob the bank of Tascosa. You guys go back to Winchester 73. There used to be an adobe right there where that building is with the clock face. All right. So that was the building that they used for the bank of Tascosa in Winchester 73. And it was the Winchester, or excuse me, the Wells Fargo stage stop in the movie Arizona where William Holden first stopped when he gets down. You recognize the building because the corner of a silo shape or, you know, round, you know or church, silo shape, whatever. Um, so you get your bearings on that. The other thing to remember is where Big J's is now was where the original hotel was. John Wayne used for everything. John Wayne and Angie Dickinson had scenes in there during Rio Bravo. Um, Marino O'Hara falls off the balcony in, in McClintock. And then Shasta ends up shooting Whitey in the town of Blackthorn during the movie Real Lobo. So during the movie Real Lobo, John Wayne rides up about where that tree is. And he's talking to the sheriff of Blackthorn. And I'm looking at the scene and I'm like, okay, where's the road to the mission? Then I remembered we had a building on rollers. We used to move it around. That was your sheriff's office for Blackthorn. Um, the sheriff invites John Wayne in for a drink. They can't find a drink, but in the process, Shasta shows up, wants to make a complaint about something that happened at Rio Lobo. She goes across the street into the hotel. The sheriff and John Wayne follow her because they didn't have anything to drink in the sheriff's office. 
While they're in there, Whitey rides in from Rio Lobo and he tries to arrest Shasta, who then shoots him with, his, with her Derringer. 20 minutes later, John Wayne's now in the town of Rio Lobo and he's sitting on his horse about where that fence is that they put up for nightfall right there in front of the bathhouse. I'm like, wait a minute, those are the same buildings they just used for Blackthorn, you know? But yeah, John Wayne did not use a lot of buildings, um, did not use a lot of space. When he did the movie Arizona, we used to have a two-story building right out here that was commonly used for a sheriff's office. In the movie El Dorado, there was a sheriff's office. John Wayne rides up, doesn't get off his horse, he's talking to Don Collier. Don Collier's the guy that plays the deep voice foreman in the TV show High Chaparral. In that movie, he's a deputy sheriff. John Wayne's talking to him. He mentions he's got to go out to Ed Asner's ranch. Don's telling him, 16 miles up this road, you can't miss it. Very next scene is John Wayne sitting on his horse talking to Ed Asner, and you actually see the sheriff's office in the background. It's definitely not 16 miles away. <laughs> Once you figure out the old town, you got John Wayne figured out pretty well. Yeah. The other rumor is there's a rumor that he used to go out and uh, sleep in the bed up there in Del Toro between shots. <laughs> so they were doing they were doing a love scene in 2016 they did a movie out here at west on the root list and the security guard was a big old tall guy chuck he's, he's going out but anyway chuck's trying to open up the building as they're doing this love scene up there and he comes back just beat red and i'm like so glad there's no no guests in the park right now <laughs> you know, watch the scene and there's like really nothing to it but you know they sure made a lot of racket <laughs> Cool. Jeremiah Hyde. Jeremiah Hyde's bringing up his army of the undead. He's bringing people back to life. Death is not the end. So that's what all the angels are. to watch with the old mission in it is Guns of Fort Petticoat with Audie Murphy. That was Fort Petticoat. Later on, John Wayne, he builds up a bigger bell tower. He used that in the movie El Dorado. Bad guy shooting down the road here at the good guys. Bull, played by Arthur Honeycutt, stands next to a wagon, uses his revolving rifle, pins down the bad guy in the bell tower. John Wayne, James Conn run up here, kick the doors open, shoot the bad guys. And that's what John Wayne does, right? Okay. All right, I still got to tell you another story. This particular picture is from the Sackets. That's Tom Selleck. He's running through Sheriff of Santa Fe. Welcome to Santa Fe, folks. <laughs> anyway, Glenn Ford wanted to be sheriff, but his history caught up to him. So if you watch the Sackets, Glenn Ford goes in there and he tries to take it out on the Sackett brothers, and the younger brother shoots him. That's what you guys get to see. Well, I'm talking to a guy that was out here we're, during COVID. We're, I run into this guy, and he's telling me, you know, this is one of the last things that Glenn Ford ever shot. Well, Glenn Ford was always famous for his fast draw. He comes out here that day, and he knows that he's supposed to get shot by the younger Sackett kid, right? But he's got this funny grin on his face. He gets out there, action, bang, shoots the kid. <laughs> the director just flips out. No, 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 he's supposed to shoot you. Yeah, 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 got it, got it, got it. Action, bang, shoots the kid again. Um, apparently, the director got so mad that he threatened to take his pay. So if you guys watch the sackets, when Glenn Ford gets shot, he takes forever to fall down <laughs> because he's still laughing about what he just did. <laughs> anyway, there's three amigos over there. And this is the opening scene from the tomb Tombstone movie. That's what you guys get to see. The opening scene right here, cowboys walk up, Mexican police come out of the wedding. Y'all killed two cowboys and they all die, right? All the Mexican <laughs> police die. So the movie starts here. From there... We flashed to Tucson, Arizona, where the herbs are getting off the train. We used to have an 1872 Baldwin locomotive out there. It's now back in uh, Virginia City, Nevada, where it originally started from because this guy's dad wrote it. So he's fully restoring the thing. But the train's gone. Train station's gone right now. Um, we'll get some of that stuff back. Anyway, the herbs are walking along after getting off the train. They talk about Doc Holliday. Next thing you know, we're flashing to Fort Worth, Texas, where Doc Holliday is actually over here in the Red Dog Saloon, stabbing Ed Bailey and Frank Stallone is no longer in the movie. So, um, anyway, my funniest scene was I'm out at Mescal, 
Well, it's still part of old Tucson. And one of the guys over there points to a building and says, right here is where Doc Holliday steps off the porch and tells Johnny Ringo I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> the only problem is, is you actually see Golden Gate Peak in the shot, so you actually know it's taken back here. And then who's the one to ask about, um, about Clint Eastwood? Well, Clint Eastwood came out here in the early 70s, did a movie called Joe Kidd. Uh, Joe Kidd's trying to get this Mexican revolutionary into town for a fair trial, but the ranchers are trying to kill the guy. So right about here, the shooting starts. Joe Kidd makes his way around to that train I was just talking about and drives the train through the railroad saloon. They actually drove the train through a building in the movie. But he shoots his way into the courthouse. In the early 70s, they built the courthouse back over here for the movie Joe Kidd. And then 20 years later, that's where the movie Tombstone ends. If y'all watched the end of Tombstone, Wyatt and Josie are dancing in the snow in Denver, Colorado. That was filmed here in July. <laughs> you might have noticed it's a little windy, right? If you guys ever need to make fake snow, don't use something like plastic. <laughs> Three weeks later, they were still cleaning up plastic scattered all over this place. When the witch building was hit? That was the courthouse back where gotcha. it, it burned down in uh, 95. That's right. Come. And I'm your Huckleberry, that was right here? That was back over back here. Back over there, okay. All right, I gotta get you to this real quick. I got another tour at 11.30. Uh-oh. You do such a great job. So much yeah, I like talking about this place. That's cool. We, could, we made it look like a haunted mansion, but if you walk up to the rope, you can see the High Chaparral Ranch House. They did five seasons out here starting in 67. I still say it's one of the best Western TV shows. It's one of the only Western TV shows where the Cowboys are usually working the cattle. You can watch pretty much all of Bonanza, and they're supposed to be ranchers. You never see a single cow. <laughs> called John Wayne Cabin, and I've had a lot of fun because most of the employees have no idea what it's from, all right? But if you guys go back and watch Rio Lobo, um, Tuscarora's girlfriend lives in town next to the mission. You actually see her best friend run up to the door in the movie. So, that's in that one. Um, the Contention Station over here. I've had a lot of fun with Contention Station. It's left over from a movie called Stay Tuned with Tom Dobbins. Did you hear that one? Anyway. Yeah. So, um... I had a group of nuns here about a month ago, and then later I had a group of Mormon missionaries. So I'm like, you guys should know this one. In the movie Stay Tuned, this couple orders a new satellite TV system, and they get sucked into their TV because the devil's using it to steal their souls. <laughs> Fortunately, the nuns laughed. I didn't get hit by lightning. We're here today. That is not the weirdest movie we did out here, all right? In the early 70s, we did a movie out here. We had a part in a movie called Night of the Lepus. How do you spell that? L E P U S. It's all about rabbits. His ranchers having a problem with rabbits overpopulating his ranch. They use Empire Ranch for his ranch. Yeah. So he goes out to Ajo College, which looks exactly like University of Arizona, and he asks the government for help. And the government does what they do best, and they turn the rabbits into giant man eaters. Our part at Old Tucson. Right out here in the field, we built a miniature version of the town of Ajo and turned those strange rabbits. We got them all over there. So it looks like there's giant rabbits running through the streets of Ajo. All right. Um, great movie. Um, there is actually a, there's supposedly a mine up here that they dynamite full of rabbits, um, but that doesn't stop them. And um, there's a scene where this guy gets his throat slashed by a rabbit, and I swear they just took an oven mitt and put fur on it. Aww. And my favorite, though, is out in Ajo, the lady's looking out her kitchen window, and she's like, ah! Next thing you know, she's laying on the ground, 
They must have dumped a whole can of red paint next to her, and it's obviously a guy in a rabbit suit attacking her. No, no. <laughs> yeah, the Night of the Leopards. You ever get to see it? See it. Um, my friend collects horror movies. That's how I got to see it. Uh, anyway, that's the church I was talking about earlier. I get a lot of people ask about the water tower over there. How's your Verizon service? Oh, it's a cell tower. Yeah, it's a cell tower. Good job. Um, the one that they use in the movie is that one over here that they now use for a control for a show. So, the high chaparral gates over here. And the other big thing I want to tell you before, well, two big things. If you guys love the stories about the herbs, which I don't, um, <laughs> you love stories about the herbs, you cannot get more herb love than the movie I Married Wyatt Herb. And that orange stagecoach is how Josephine gets the tombstone, which is actually the Mescal set for I Married Wyatt Earp. And it's Marie Osmond playing Josephine Marcus and Bruce Boxleitner playing Wyatt Earp. I had a guy in the tour, in the tour about a month ago and he just blurts out, that movie sucked. Well, thank you for your review. So like I said, not everything we make is great, but you know.